We are live. What is going on, Exchange family? This is a welcome to another episode of Chiefs Chat. And um, I am your incoming senior enlisted advisor, Chief Massar and Kevin Osby, aka the backup quarterback. Um, Chief Reyes <laughs> is somewhere judging me from afar. So uh, he's looking <laughs> in and, and making and looking how ridiculous I, I'll be for the next three years and and going forward. But before I start, let me introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing? Doing good, Chief. Doing good. Man, it's Friday. Yay! Yes. Friday afternoon. Yes, but we got, a, we got a wonderful guest with us today. Uh, this, this young man took a unique path to the uh, NFL, and uh, we're going to get a chance to hear his story and uh, get some per perspective from him. So uh, without further ado, uh, Julie, can you uh, can you introduce our, our next guest? Absolutely. We are excited to welcome today's guest. Our friends at PNG helped us connect with him today. So Leah and I met him back in December ahead of the 120th Army Navy game. He's an elite athlete who played four years with the midshipmen and is about to embark on his rookie season with the NFL. He is the first service academy graduate to be drafted by the Miami Dolphins. Please help us welcome wide receiver Math Malcolm Perry. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, thank you for joining us, Malcolm. I appreciate you guys. Malcolm, thanks so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us. We're super excited to have you on. And for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know if you have any questions for Malcolm, and we'll read those live throughout the broadcast. Now is a good time to start your watch party to enjoy this Chief Chat with your friends. And if you don't already follow us, you should, because Chief Chat is every Tuesday and Thursday, and you'll know who's coming up next. So, man, we're so honored to have you with us, um, and congratulations on all your successes at the Naval Academy and on being drafted into the NFL, man. How, how does it feel like going to the league? Uh, it feels great. Uh, you know, like like a lot of kids out there, it, it was a lifelong dream, and, um, you know, like you said, it was it was a unique, a unique path for sure. Um, not a lot of guys get the opportunity coming out of service academies to, you know, live their dream out and um, be able to play in the NFL and also um, later on be able to serve the country, so. Um, awesome. I'm awesome. extremely awesome. grateful and, you know, looking forward to uh, everything to come. Awesome. So where are you calling us from and uh, how you been doing during the pandemic? Uh, I'm in Clarksville, Tennessee right now. I'm in my hometown uh, right outside of Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Um, so I grew up uh, on the Army base, moved right outside um, shortly after that. And um, uh, it's been good so far. I've been working out. Uh, that's pretty much all you can do uh, during the mm -hmm. pandemic and stuff like that. So. Uh, I was I was lucky enough to make it down to Florida, um, get down there, work out with a couple guys, and uh, I'm back now. So happy to be here. Awesome. Look like you look like you inside the bubble uh, from where you where we're sitting at right now. Like the <laughs> no, I'm 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 not in a bubble, but uh, okay. close to it. Okay. So you attended the Naval Academy, and your parents are Gulf War veterans. I believe they're Army veterans. Um, our nation service members and military communities are near and dear to you. We know that. So tell us about be being part of PNG's programs for military kids, which launched virtually this month. Um, how, tell us a little bit about the programs, and then what it means to you to be able to give back to military kids. Uh, it means it means the world. Honestly, um, growing up on post, uh, you know, I was able to go to a couple of camps um, myself and you know I know it means a lot to a lot of kids who um, you know their parents are out overseas and deployed and maybe they don't have the access to to these great camps like this so um, it means a lot to be able to come back give back and uh, kind of you know give back to the kids that I see myself in so it's awesome. Oh, that's excellent that you get to see this full circle and be on the other side now and as Julie said we met you back in Philadelphia uh, before the Army Navy game. Navy notched a victory over Army last year. So what was it like playing in America's game? And what was your favorite memory from your time at the Academy? Um, it, it's definitely a special game. It's definitely the biggest biggest game I've been a part of in my life, um, especially the last one, uh, which we finally got, got the W. So, um, you know, we went out in the right fashion, but didn't start the way we wanted. So um, it's definitely different. You know, the atmosphere is crazy. Um, you got the president on the sideline. The, the fans are going crazy. Um, it's just different. Um, uh, I'm very fortunate to be a be a part of it and be able to experience it. Um, and you know, going out with a W is definitely uh, on my bucket list and not shut off. 
Yeah, I, I talked to Leah and, and Julie about the last time they interviewed you, and I, I don't think y'all had the W, and it, <laughs> your, your answer was a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So definitely favorite favorite experience at the Academy was being Army, for sure. I definitely, definitely say that's up there. Yeah, and, and we, we're in a room full of, well, we're in a building full of Army folks, so I'm sure they, they're probably turning off the, the live right now, so it's all good. <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> So, so I'm not really uh, too familiar with, you know, a lot of folks uh, that, that go from a service academy and, and make it professionally. So there's one person that I know for sure, uh, David Robinson, the, the Admiral, right? And so right. I know he had to serve his time. And then after he served his time, he was able to go to the NBA and of course be a, a future Hall of Famer. So um, not that, that, many, that many athletes don't get a chance to do that. What, what does that mean to you? And um, how does that, how does that, how will you serve the Navy once your career is finished? Um, it means a lot. Like I said, um, you know, even in my three years that I was at the academy, um, when they didn't do the rule change, a lot of guys I saw, you know, with the talent and the potential to, to make it to the next level, weren't able to just due to the rules. So um, just that in itself and being the only person to, you know, um, be able to benefit from the rule change uh, and go, go to the NFL. And it means a lot, you know, cause I'm very, very fortunate, um, you know, to be the guy that uh, was blessed enough to get that opportunity. Um, and uh, I forgot, I forgot the next question. I'm sorry. So, the, it, so once you, once you finish your pro career, then what happens next? Okay. So um, I commissioned, or well, I will be commissioned uh, as a officer in the Marine Corps. So I'll be a second lieutenant. Exactly. Hoorah. So yeah. I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but uh, I'm a former Marine myself. I started okay. off in the Marine Corps and then uh, I joined the Air Force. So I call myself a, around. Yeah, I call myself a German or an airhead, airhead <laughs> depending on who I'm talking to. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I, so I'll be I'll be joining the Marine Corps. Uh, looking forward to it. A lot of my friends uh, on the team are also, you know, embarking on that journey as we speak now. So looking forward to it. Now, do they do they let you know what your MOS is going to be or what? Uh, they go down to uh, to school, TVS for for six months and then they do all that stuff and then they find out their MOS. Oh, okay. Uh, find graduation, so. Okay, awesome, man. That's good Good information. Thanks for sharing. Sir. So you're known for being a dedicated, versatile athlete. What tips do you have for resiliency and keeping your spirits up during hard times? Um, I'd say for sure, definitely. Um, the best word of advice I got was, uh, don't let your highs get too high and don't let your lows get too low. So uh, staying level-headed level and keeping your goal at the forefront of, of, you know, what you're working towards. And I think that kind of puts it in, puts, puts your train in on the tracks towards your goal. Awesome, awesome. Sorry, I was muted and talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> It happens, right? <laughs> so Malcolm, what about nutrition? That's a big part of staying well too. What's your go-to meal or snack? Um, that's huge. Nutrition is huge, especially coming up at the, at the next level. I think um, that's kind of like a field that guys kind of slip on and, and kind of, you know, <laughs> don't get the most of their self uh, through nutrition. My favorite meal, um, I, I'm a big fish guy. I like, I like fish. So um any type of grilled salmon or something like that uh, is my go-to for sure. Seafood. So Malcolm, yeah, I'm checking the chats right now. And uh, we got some folks saying, uh, we got Jacqueline Perez saying hi from Puerto Rico. That's awesome. Hello. Yeah. And we got a uh, chief master Sergeant Luis Reyes, who's over there judging me. He says, go Navy. <laughs> yes, but you, but, you a devil, but you're a devil dog now. So, uh, it's still Navy. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Uh, and Gene Huffman says, uh, hi from Quantico. Hello. So, nice to meet you. Yeah. So you got you got a, a rounding of uh, people in the Corps and the, and the Navy, man. They, they love seeing uh, their folks succeed. And and I, I'm sure they were cheering you on the whole year. And of course, beating the Army, that, that's a huge thing. So right. uh, I appreciate congratulations that again. Thank you. So I know uh, America is, is hoping to get back to normal soon, just like I'm sure you are. Uh, and, and the football is a big part of that. And so do you think the game's going to look a little bit different because of the pandemic? Um, I sure hope it doesn't, but I'm pretty sure it will. Um, just like everybody else, we're waiting on word for, 
what's the next step, what's what's next to come, and you know what we're able to do. Um, it's pretty hard for a lot of the players to to sit around and not be able to do what they're so programmed to do, uh, and be able to access facilities and stuff like that, and be able to work. So, um, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure it'll look different, but you know, just like everybody else, I'm waiting on word, and I'm definitely gonna do whatever whatever is best for. Me. I know you're excited, man. I know you're ready to get on the field and, and, and all this, you know, staying at home and wearing masks. I know that's the crazy, <laughs> we, yeah. we, we, we tired of that. We over that. <laughs> exactly. What are you, what are you most looking forward to about, you know, with your first season as a pro coming up what, and do you have any specific goals for yourself that you're setting? Um, just being the best version of myself I can be. Um, I'm most looking forward to, you know, getting around the guys and, and learning as much as I can, uh, especially with the position change. Um, you know, yeah, just trying to get around all, all the guys, the wide receivers, uh, and try to soak up as much knowledge as I, as I can to move, to use moving forward. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So, so they're gonna convert you to a, a wide receiver from? Is that your position? Uh, that you as far as I know, yeah. So I'll be a slot <laughs> wide receiver, um, with the possibility of being thrown other places. So. Okay. Just doing whatever they tell me. That's so, what is that like to transition from quarterback to to receiver? Um, it's definitely different. Um, it, it's it's somewhat natural to me. I grew up. That's what I was playing. I was playing wide receiver, um, and all my off time. But when I was on the field playing for a team, I was I was playing quarterback or running back. So um, I trained in, in different positions and stuff like that. So I'm not in a I'm not too far off, but I'm definitely trying to catch up to a couple guys. See. So when it when is uh well I, I can't even call it spring training uh. <laughs> <laughs> When does training uh, start for, for the teams to get together and stuff? Um, we're still waiting on word. Um, oh, okay. It's actually uh, – it was scheduled to start on the 21st, um, but we're still wait, waiting on the NFL PA and the NFL to, to reach an agreement on, um, you know, terms of when the rookies start, when the veterans start and stuff like that. Yeah. So so the so the so um, the old folks ain't been able to haze you yet. Is that is that a true <laughs> statement? I mean uh, – <laughs> A little bit over Zoom, yeah. They oh, got, they got <laughs> a so okay. What, what they make you do? Now. So they make you dress up or cut your own hair or, or like? <laughs> it hasn't been that extreme yet. It's it's been a couple singing songs. Uh, I had to sing. I had to sing the navy blue and gold over over chat to the whole team. So <laughs> a, a little bit of haze and stuff like that, but. Nothing. You want to sing for us now? You want to sing it? No. No? <laughs> Just kidding. He said, you told me this was going to be easy. <laughs> He's like, that was not in the script. No, <laughs> no I know. No, I, I watch Hard Knocks a lot. And so I see what they do to the rookies and, and uh, I feel bad for them, but it's it's also fun at the same time. So yeah, it's, it's part of the game at this point. Yeah. Okay. Malcolm, excellent. It's been so great having you on. But before we wrap up, can you remind us where we can follow you online and on social media? Uh, yeah, so I'm not I'm not big on social media, but if I am, I'm on Instagram, and I'm at uh, Malcolm underscore Perry, and that's it. Yeah, no TikTok, Malcolm. No, we no TikTok. I'm not I'm not a, I'm not a social media guy. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Well, we, well, of course we we appreciate you for spending time with us today, um, and thanks to to Procter and Gamble for making this possible. We know this means a lot to the military community. Uh, we wish you all the best in your return to the NFL and appreciate what you do for our airmen, soldiers, Marines, sailors, and Coast Guard members. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, your time. Uh, of course, football is kind of, it, it helps the, the, the military members, you know, because we need some, well, the world needs like reprieval from all this craziness that's going on. And uh, football is a, just a good way to take our mind off of it and hopefully probably take your mind off it as well. So we appreciate you for, uh, you know, being outstanding and uh, your, your mother and, and father raised a, a, a good young man, man. You, Thank you. you. I appreciate that. Very well mannered and uh, you're going to do well, man. We, we wish you well in your future and your uh, future service as well. Thank you. Same to you guys. Thanks, Malcolm. Okay. We wish you all the best. Good luck this year. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye, Malcolm. All right. Bye. Bye Malcolm. Chief Take chat care. out. Don't hang up though, Malcolm. We want to nope. talk to you for a second off the air. Okay. So, okay. Cool. Bye y'all. <laughs>